Welcome everybody to the first episode of Love ADHD, a place where genius and scatter me. I'm so excited, Tony. I'm I'm very excited. I'm so excited. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> You're speechless. Well, I'm excited because we first met when I interviewed on your podcast, which I was like stars in my eyes. So excited about. It's so, so excited silly. when I was a baby podcaster myself. <laughs> I had written a review on your podcast. And I think oh, it showed right. up as ICU podcast and you emailed me and said, would you like to be a guest? It was before you were as big time. Like I think now you request all yeah. the time to be on people's podcasts, but you reached out to me and I literally remember being downstairs in my house and I was like, ah! with my phone. And I was like, I'm going on the virtual <laughs> couch because I just discovered you. And I, it's like this someone I just related to so well mm. and you wanted me yeah. on your podcast. And that's where our journey began. Uh, so this is fun. This is a fun full circle moment to the club. How many and how many years ago was that? It has you know? been at least four or five, at least. Okay, that's kind of a trip. I forgot that you did the review, and I totally did that because it's funny when you're saying the stars in the eyes and big podcaster or whatever. Because I was still every week I was reaching out to people to have guests on my podcast, and then when I saw that you had a book, and then I thought, oh my gosh, this is a real author. So I was doing the same thing. I thought, oh my gosh, this author is going to come on my podcast. So that's funny. And I think that as we start talking more about good old ADHD, boy, right there, rejection sensitivity. I mean, I got so used to this anticipatory rejection that, yeah, I'm the same. If you responded back to me, I tried to play it cool, but I was thinking, oh my gosh, okay. All right. That's great. And then I think I probably did that. I mean, if you want to, it's fine. Whatever. It's no big deal. And I don't even you know. know a ton about ADHD. So you're starting to talk about stuff that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's me. And I have never thought about ADHD. Yeah. So we're going to get into that later though. Yeah. Today... We yeah. are putting you in the hot seat and I'm very excited about it um, because we're going to talk about your story of the learning about that you had ADHD and what some of your preconceived notions are. So I'm going to be the interviewer, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. I know that you, you've had a very successful podcast as well, but I think between the virtual couch and waking up the narcissism, I'm pushing... 500 episodes or so, and I'm the interviewer. So this is very uncomfortable. And we'll we'll talk about that someday because that is part of my anxious attachment. Thank you, ADHD, which uh, my whole life I'm saying, no, please notice me. And then when people do, I say, I mean, maybe not. I, don't, I mean, I don't think so. We're the same person. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, my first question for you is, what were some of your preconceived notions about ADHD before this was ever something you knew about as something you'd be diagnosed with? What did you think ADHD was? Oh, it's funny because I'm sitting here uh, moving my legs around like a young child. I'm a 53 year old man and I just grabbed a toy to squeeze while we're talking. I think that I would have thought that, oh, it's somebody that can't keep still and wants to play with toys. There's a skit. I'm a big Saturday Night Live fan and there's a skit from back in the day and it was Mike Myers. Uh, he had a leash. And he was like a playing a little kid and he's tied to a jungle gym equipment and he would go running off and then get caught up in the leash. And I think he would have chocolate all over his mouth. And that was my impression. I, mean, I just thought that's the kid. And when you would go to an amusement park and there's a little kid on a leash, I just thought, oh, that's ADHD. Not me. It's that kid. So that's it. And then as an adult, I would run into people that were had the hyperactivity part in, in bunches. And I didn't feel like I necessarily had that. So I just felt like it was more about the H, the hyperactivity than, than anything. See, now I want to ask you and tell me about what you think, Julie, but I That's guess that will be too. another yeah, episode. Yeah, totally good. Okay. okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, I think fairly normal for a lot of people uh, that that's what they think of. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what I yeah. thought because that's episode two. <laughs> now, when did you first suspect that you had it? Like how old were you when you Started suspecting yeah. and what was that like for you? What was that thought process? Yeah, it's it's crazy. I I know I did a two part. This is funny. I thought it was hilarious. I did a three part, two part podcast. So I did part one, you no know, one of two, two of two, and then three of two because I think that was funny because that's ADHD in a nutshell, you know. But I did a three part podcast and it was 150 episodes into the virtual couch, so it wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was just a few years ago, and I was aware of it earlier than that, but I just didn't think that it was as as debilitating as it was. And and so I actually had this 
an interesting experience to me where I had this running partner who was a pharmaceutical sales rep and we ran all the time together and I had gone through a career change. I was in software sales for a decade. I didn't really like it much. And I went back and got my master's in counseling and I actually liked it. And so I liked school. I was doing well in school because I liked what I was actually studying which I'm sure we'll get to all this stuff down the road about how, what that looks like from an ADHD brain. And then I'm running with this guy and I'm really, I told him, I think I'm depressed. And I was honestly starting to look at maybe taking an antidepressant and I'd done this career change and I knew I wanted to do a podcast. I, I think I was about to blow a book deal. Um, I paid for a website that I never turned in all my stuff for, you know, so I'm sitting there my therapy practice is just starting. I had gone into a lot of debt to go back to grad school and then I couldn't finish my website. I had, I sat on my podcast equipment for two or three years and there were so many things going on. And so I just started really feeling down. And so then I was telling this guy on a run, all of these things. And I said, you know, I just don't even want to do it and I don't, but I don't want to not do it. I don't want to sit around, but I don't want to not sit around and I don't want to. And then he just said, oh, you're depressed, my friend. And I was like, really? I mean, I don't feel depressed, but I do feel discouraged or, you know, all those kind of things. And so then at that point, I thought what was really interesting is I'm starting to see more and more clients and I speak a lot in my area. And when we get to episode two, Julie is a very, very well-known public speaker as well. And so I would speak a lot. And just because of that, I started to get a lot of, I don't know, I want to say for lack of a better phrase, you know, higher end clients or CEOs of companies or this sort of thing. And I had one in particular that he was very open about his ADHD. And so I would ask him questions about it all the time. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh no, I, that's, that's how I feel too. You know, but, but he was successful enough that he never had to finish things because he could be very entrepreneurial. And then he had people to come in and take care of things. And then at one point we had a, and this, this is like this, what a, what an opportunity, but he had a, a coaching call with I know, some, I forget the guy's name and he was an ADHD coach. And, and I was going over to this guy's office to do therapy there at the end of the day. And then he just said, Hey, I forgot I have this coaching call. So then I go in there and I'm on the coaching call with the ADHD coach. And I think, I think I've made this up now to mythologize this, but I think I remember oh, the ADHD coach asking a couple of questions and me, you know, answering and then going, Oh wait, this isn't for me. You know? And at that point, then I just thought, oh, okay. And, uh, and it's ADHD. And I don't know if I want to tell this part of the story or not. I have the editing capabilities, right? But so then at that point, no, I think- I, I love I it gave, when someone starts a yeah. response that way. That, and I don't want to oh. judge, but, or I shouldn't tell you this, but that's when I'm like, tell me more. Oh, <laughs> I know, right? Well, and it's funny too, Julie, because I realize now on minute eight of the first question you've asked, and I haven't taken a breath yet, that I think this is a lot of ADHD too. And when I'm being interviewed on other people's podcasts, you know, they're always like, Hey, uh, you know, you're, you're always so full of energy, but I, I want to get through a couple of these questions. And, you know, and then I always think, Oh, that's a nice way to say, can, can you stay a little focused there, buddy? And I always think that was funny, but, um, and now I forgot the question, which is another part of things that happened, but no, I think the thing I wasn't going to tell. So I get out of that meeting and I remember all of a sudden kind of being frustrated and this, this same guy who had already moved, he had moved to a new land, a land far away. And I don't, we weren't, we don't talk on the phone very often. And he calls me and he just said, Hey, Tony over what's going on? And I just said, I said, I have ADHD and, and it, I'm going nuts because I don't even know what to do with it. And then see, here's the part that I don't know if I need to tell. Let's just say hypothetically, um, he says, man, I think I have it too. Uh, no, see, this is not. And then we both chuckled and laughed and lived happily ever after. Uh -uh. Uh -uh -uh. Not today. <laughs> So, okay. I almost feel like this is the part where it is funny because as a therapist, I have heard many of these stories. Let me just tell a story and then people can kind of just let their minds go where they want to go. Sometimes when I have parents who think they may have ADHD as a therapist, and then they'll say, no, I think I really do. And I think I need to go get medication. And then I'll say, oh, man, that's really cool. Um, you ever tried the medication or anything like that? And then you get them just looking this dead eye like, no. And then I, and then I say, oh, I mean, it's kind of normal sometimes where if, uh, people, if their kids have ADHD medication or whatever, and somebody thinks they have, maybe they've tried it, but that's illegal, Julie. <laughs> Nobody would do that. Okay. Wait. No, don't put the pieces together. So then, so then at that point, then I was like, holy cow, ADHD medication is amazing. I've heard. <laughs> 
And so then I just thought, because I kind of have to tell that part of the story because then at that point, then I, I thought, I remember, I remember I didn't tell my wife and maybe, or hypothetically, I took it on a Sunday because I didn't want it to make my brain explode on a, on a Monday. And I remember going to church and I remember just sitting there going, just, this is the greatest talk I've ever heard. This is amazing. And then I went to the Sunday school class and I was like, Hey, this, this guy's amazing. Who, who else loves this lesson? And then I went home that yeah. afternoon and I'm like, watch it. This is unreal. <laughs> right. And then that whole afternoon, I'm like, why have we never watched this, this show before? And then I remember that night, it's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm sitting there in the bed, lights on my laptop, and I'm probably written my eighth novel of the day. And I was like, I just feel, I feel alive, you know? And so then at that point, then I thought, I think I have ADHD. Like, I think it's pretty confirmed. And, uh, and so then I reach out to my doctor and I'm like, Hey, I need to get in. And I'm with this very large hospital organization in California that they're wonderful, um, but it can be a little bit slow moving. And, and so then at that point they say, yeah, come on in. And this is the fun part. This is why I think this is funny, Julie. They, they said, yeah, we can get you in on whatever. I didn't pay attention. And then they send me an email and I see the word Thursday. So I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Uh, so I'm going in this Thursday. So I clean, I cleared off my morning schedule of clients and I go in there and I'm like, hey, I'm here for my assessment, my HD assessment. And they're like, six weeks from now on a Thursday. So I forgot to look at the actual date part. I mean, I saw the word Thursday. So then I just said, okay, well, I'm here. So can I go ahead and do it? And they said, oh no, we're backed out six weeks. So let's just pretend that I already knew now. I've got ADHD and I think medication would change my life. And now I just need to wait for six weeks to then start the testing process. And that six weeks was like one of the worst times of my life because I just thought so close. And then I got in there and I took the assessment and then it was just still a process to get the diagnosis and the medication. And, uh, and then since that time, it has just been go. I mean, since that time now, you know, 500 podcasts later and a best-selling book and courses and speak all the time and, and just everything, everything is, uh, I now have a unicorn. I have a pot of gold. I mean, it's, right. everything's been great. Right. It's all great. I yeah. love it. Okay. So how old were you when you were diagnosed? At 40, wait, 45 or 46. It's been like okay, six or seven years. 46. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me, you've had a lot of success since finding out your diagnosis, which is really cool. And I think hopefully it will bring a lot of hope yeah. to listeners. I know it really to me as yeah. someone that's newly been diagnosed. Is there anything that surprised you about having ADHD based on, you know, your preconceived notions and maybe what you thought when you were first diagnosed? What's something that surprised you about it? Yeah, I think one of the funny things is, and I'm so grateful to be on my journey as a therapist as well, because I just, I just, the more we learn about ADHD, you know, it is, you, it, you do have to deal with, I mean, we're pretty impulsive. And so that impulsivity can be a good thing, or sometimes it, it may not be. And then this rejection sensitivity kicks in, and then we can feel like what's wrong with me and I'm broken. And so why I'm so pumped about us doing this podcast is because I think I feel very fortunate to to put a lot of pieces together of, you know, I'm a big fan of this type of therapy called acceptance and commitment therapy, which is is basically, is it starts with, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. You don't have automatic negative thoughts or stinking thinking, or, you know, you think and feel the way you do, because you are the only version of you that has ever walked on the face of the earth. And so I'm learning that as I'm starting to embrace my ADHD. And, and I think that was really helpful because, and, and I really am, I do remember your question. Because I think the thing that surprised me the most was just once I was aware that I have it, then, I mean, I just thought everybody had a million thoughts going. I thought everybody had a soundtrack of hilarious jokes going at all the time, all the time. And I just thought that this was just so normal, whatever normal is. Once I embraced it, and then I, and I think this timing of learning acceptance and commitment therapy, that, that then it was, it was just fit so well of, and there was nothing wrong with me. I'm thinking and feeling the way I am because I am. And then I was learning that I don't have to defend myself. I don't have to, if, and, and I was running into, I remember doing this one speaking gig and I had done the podcast about it. And I talked about how my medication starting to take Ritalin for me was incredible. And I remember this guy walks by me and I can still remember to this day, him just saying, Oh, I wish I could take a pill and my life would change. And, and I noticed that I wanted to feel bad. I wanted to yell at him. I wanted to whatever. And then instead I just responded and I said, it's amazing, you know? And I just felt so, it's like, okay, no, I'm embracing this. And then, you know, I could be super immature right then too. And just say, and uh, I know that he is somebody that would probably love to 
to be doing things that he would really like to do. And so once, you know, I really embraced that this is who I am now, it made it a lot easier to start doing the things that I really wanted to do. And, and by that, and I think you'll appreciate this too, because I know you do a lot of things, but at that point I was starting to, I still was speaking, I was writing a lot and I'm seeing clients and I was doing podcasts and I was starting to put courses together and I was, and there was a part of me that felt like, and I even had people say, you're spread too thin. And then, you know, you need to really focus on something. And I just was like, okay, actually, no, I, I don't. Because ADHD, there's a concept I love called the, the right kind of difficult. And we have to find the right kind of difficult. And that doesn't mean we find it and we are locked in. It means the right kind of difficult for right now, because I am going to be distracted. It's going to happen. And so I'm going to love one thing for a while, and then I'm going to shift to another thing. And then if I embrace the fact that, oh, that's what it feels like to be me, nothing's wrong with me. Then I start adding more things in and I might start switching from one to the next, to the next, to the next. And, and then over time that like, that is a joy. I mean, it's the coolest thing ever. And I also feel like the becoming a therapist was so cool because literally everybody that walks in my office is, is a, a new kind of difficult. And uh, so anyway, that, I, I don't think I just answered your, I told you four or five things that are so cool about it, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. There we go. Here comes a joke. Amazing. That's for me. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Girl, I, yeah. You got to give a girl some warning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I'm not. I, I was just sitting there saying if there's uh, if there's space to fill, then I'm going to start uh, cracking jokes because it feels uncomfortable. As you know, when we had a very, very emotional interview, when you opened up your, your heart and soul, and then I'm like, stuff. I crack jokes. <laughs> okay. So now you have a new little mission here. You have a couple okay. minutes, not a lot of minutes, Tony, but you have a lot of minutes. I do. I have some minutes. minutes. I have minutes. So this concept, we've called this podcast Love ADHD. And as you and I have yeah. talked about this, we kind of see, I don't know, there's like that movie, P.S. I Love You. There's a movie called Love, Simon. Yeah. And we just really love this idea that ADHD is a partner with us. And it's trying yeah. to send us messages. It's trying to help us fill our needs. It's trying to help us, but there is some genius about it. And there can also be some scatter for sure. And so yeah. with all that you've been through and having been diagnosed at 45 or 46, having that perspective, being di diagnosed as an adult, I'm not going to say an older adult, just an adult. I know. Uh, I was ready for it. Uh, I mean, you are bald, but I am. I want you to think about if you're ADHD, like you're the ADHD mascot right now. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what your outfit is. I'm trying to think of what that would look like exactly. Maybe listeners could send us some ideas. Oh, and maybe we could come up with an infographic. Yeah. I'm liking all of this. This <laughs> going on for me. But you are okay. ADHD master. You're it. You're ADHD incarnate. Okay. You came back. You were a Buddhist. You came back in this life. You did real bad. No, I'm just kidding. But you are ADHD. <laughs> you can send yes. one message to someone who's just been diagnosed with ADHD. And you're going to sign it. Love ADHD. What would you say to them? Oh, I, I get the chills a little bit with this as you were laying that out, Julie. And I mean, everywhere of this, I'm still getting the chills. That's a cool one. It's a very long chill. I think maybe the air conditioning <laughs> actually just came on. But I'm going to go back with no, it was a moment. Uh, it really is that that concept I shared a little bit earlier where I would say, okay, here I am. I'm ADHD and it's you and you're new. And, it, and Can you just what? start with dear someone or something like that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, dear Julie, you are not broken. You are human. And you are the only version of Julie that has ever walked the face of the earth with your nature and your nurture and your birth order and your DNA and your abandonment and your rejection, your hopes, your dreams, your fears, and your slightly stunted uh, dopamine neuroreceptors. So what a joy. What, what a wonderful opportunity you have to then get to do all kinds of things and not get bored of them. Or when you do get bored of them, then you have you have full ability and I give you permission to then go do something else. And then if you get tired of that, yeah, go do something else. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Love your pal, ADHD. Thank you. Thanks for addressing yeah. it to me too. I could use, I, I can go <laughs> to that every morning. Yeah. It's like, this is your day. You're, you're doing what you're doing because you do it and it's awesome. And if you don't want to do it anymore, that's cool. And then you can do something else. And then, and maybe you don't even like that. And if not, okay, um, how about yeah. this other thing? And I know that that goes in the, you know, flies in the face 
of a lot of people who say, you just need to focus. It's like, really? You don't think I haven't tried that for a while? Yeah, it works for a little bit. You're like, it's adorable. Oh you know, this focus. This whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, can I tell you a very a funny thing about this too, which I think, and, and, and I want you to maybe like uh, throw something at me virtually yeah. when I'm like, you know, as a therapist, because I realize I think human beings in general think a lot of these things. You don't just have to be a therapist, but I, I noticed that when somebody is in my office and they say something like, oh, my, my collar, I got to adjust it, you know, my OCD. And then I have somebody with crippling OCD that was in here the hour before that just, you know, sudded up my whole restroom sink because you know they're so afraid of germs or or somebody that you can tell their anxiety because my rug is a little bit off and they're like can you can you fix that like is that a quote like that same concept i think happens with adhd where somebody will say you know and then uh, my adhd and i just i just say you you have no idea you really don't have any idea what adhd is like and my kids often will do this funny thing i think where they will we, we do this sometimes when we're in, in line in places and they'll just kind of say hey uh you know do do the thing that your brain does and then it's like it's on, you know, so that one, I'm already done it with you. It's like, okay, like I'm looking in your background and, and seeing that microwave. And I'm thinking that we've had that microwave before. And do you get the, the fingerprints on it? And if so, do you use Windex and which one do you use the yellow kind or do you use the blue kind? And then are you a, are you a select a size paper towel guy? Or are you like a full size paper towel guy? And one time I heard an interview with tiny Tim who sings tiptoe through the tulips. And he said that he uses paper towels to dry himself after he showers. I think that's insane. And then actually what is a tulip if we're being honest i don't even know because i've never really been a big fan of flowers and one time i did try to grow a garden but it was over on the side of the house and i was like i can grow a garden but then i never did any research on it and i never watered it and then it died but at that point i'm like you know what who likes a garden anyway and so i think that maybe is the genesis of why i've never eaten a vegetable so i mean like there's a thing where there and you know love your pal adhd <laughs> so yeah that's what when somebody says oh my adhd i'm like Really? Is that is that what you just experienced as well? Well, you and know? I'm thinking of so many topics that I can't wait to cover. Partly selfishly, because I am so new to this world that I'm like, oh, I have so many questions I want to ask you. And I think it's going to be so good for our audience to have someone that has more experience and the therapeutic audience, or not the therapeutic audience, and the therapeutic background. And someone that's such a baby, yeah. such a newbie to this whole world. as Because as you're talking, I'm like, wait, that sounds like me. Wait. That's because of Trump. Yeah. Wait, I don't know. And and the, we don't have all oh. the answers, <laughs> yeah. right? We don't have all the answers. Yeah. Oh, I, I actually do, Julie. I can't wait until you ask, you say something like, uh, this will be hilarious already. Um, you're going to ask me something like, something, something, something. Is that ADHD? And I'm going to say, no, not really. And then hilarity will ensue. I can't wait I for that. But there's so many topics I'm excited <laughs> to discuss with you. I can't wait. Um, me too. Oh, Julie, I'm excited. I'm so excited about this. This is like a, a match made in heaven, a dream come true. Chocolate meets peanut butter. Like, here we go. I can't wait. Okay. And the next episode, your girl and me. I don't know if it's going to be quite as entertaining, yeah. but. It's oh, yes, it will be. I'll probably end up in tears. Yours is all about snorting. Mine, I'll probably start sobbing about. And then. I is it sobbing? Crazy, okay. But really, I just took some Adderall. <laughs> Oh, well, it's funny. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying about the different places that we're at, though, because I'm making it sound like, oh, it's great. I love every, love every minute of it. But boy, there's been I mean, I remember I feel like for a year or two, I, I still kind of didn't even want to my wife to know when I was taking my medication because I thought eh, she probably thinks it's bad. You know, and I that do sort love of thing. hearing that because that's yeah. reminding me that was a point I wanted to make as you were talking, which I forgot. Shocker. But now I'm remembering it, is <laughs> we're making a ton of play of this, which is fun. And it is so good to be playful about it. And I think it's so good to also acknowledge yeah. that a lot of people that come to an ADHD diagnosis, there's been a lot of pain beforehand trying so hard to fit a mold. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to give you away, but I can for sure yeah. relate to that. And just feeling like, man, I feel like I'm giving 300% and I'm, I'm still not being successful in relationships and the stuff I'm trying yeah. to do. And it's like, it's like, I know that I, I know, I, I know the genius, like I'm, I'm, man, we can't pull it together. And so I'm just so excited to talk about all these topics, all the feels, all the laughing. It's going to be great. So. And I'll tell you real quick too, I know we're out of time, but this is uh, this is what we're going to do with ADHD, of course, is uh, is continue to go on at times. But the, even that, when you were saying, when people try really hard, I remember one of the first things that I heard or one of the things I heard that was so comforting was uh, it was this concept that imagine that you find out that you need glasses, but then you just tell yourself, you know what though? I'm just going to try to squint for a year 
before I, before I try glasses, you know? And so it's like that it's silly. So then, but I put the glasses on, you know, the, the medication or that sort of thing. And now I can see. So why on earth would I then go back to, I just need to try harder. I just need to squint more. And the, I mean, we'll talk about so much of that too, because I'm fascinated by the, you know, the, the research, the, all that stuff around it. And so I want you to know, Julie, you were in good hands because uh, I wish that I would have had a, I wish I would have had a son, a, a sensei for me because I was trying to navigate a lot of this just on my own. And so, yeah, I think we're going to be able to help a lot of people. So I would love if people will send us questions because I think that would be fun yes, to answer and those. Topics. That would be fantastic. We yeah. don't have an email yet. I mean, you and I both have business emails, I know. but you can definitely reach out to either of us on our websites, your Tony Open. Dot com. I'm yeah. 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 Maybe we'll have some more official okay. one day. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Oh man. I can't wait. I can't wait. So <laughs> Tony Overbay, right. thank you for having me Julie. interview you on the podcast today. You were... Thank you for interviewing me. I cannot wait till awesome. next time. See you later. everybody. All right. Okay. Bye.